I'm sure I can see just the way the commit is laid out in that, in that park over there in that street. I can see why uh, uh, those individuals will be attracted to that area. Um, and I'm sure my command knows about it. Um, I'm new to the command, but uh, we are directing uh, uh, our traffic enforcement officers in this area. Matter of fact, uh, tomorrow, Thursday, just uh, since you guys are here, um, you guys get a heads up. We, we have a traffic uh, initiative going on. All White Lane Road from 43 up to the 47. So it's going to go from 43, 47. I mean, 43, 49, 47. All on the White Lane Road corridor. There's going to be traffic enforcement. If you're on your cell phone, oh, sorry, if you're speeding, if you're doing anything uh, 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 unlawful. Um, <laughs> You're going to be I'm covering him. So, you might want to tell your friends and family NYPD is going to be on White Plains Road tomorrow, Thursday. That's just a little heads up. Um, but to talk to you about your area specifically, I can move my traffic enforcement off up to that area and address that concern. Um, I know uh, year to date we had two traffic fatalities. They were both right here in, in this area on Boston Road. Uh, yeah, not exactly one was across the street. Um, uh, one was a DWI, and the other one was uh, uh, an elderly uh, yep. female who was crossing that block. So our attention is already in this area for traffic enforcement. Boston Road, we've been doing a lot of traffic enforcement. White Plains Road, we're going to be do doing tomorrow. I can shift it over and tell them about your community. Because there's no, there's no stores over there, and there's one side is the park, one yeah. side is apartments. Yeah. So there's really not a lot of walking across the street. So that's why I'm thinking also like you are that... You know, they could just go and not have to worry about hitting somebody or just other than cars. Yep. <laughs> no, I agree. It's, it? That area just seems like it's very uh, attractive to that type of activity. So uh, I can uh, tell my uh, executive officer, John Hall, Captain Hall, uh, that you're concerned. That's no problem. We'll, we'll do enforcement over there and uh, we'll look for that uh, the white pickup truck in the, uh, what's the other one? Um, it's, a dark, it's a dark color, dark, either very dark blue or black uh, trailblazer. Okay. That's not a problem. Um, so you'll even get even more police presence. Um, <laughs> besides the crime fighters, you're going to get uh, traffic enforcement officers up there now. So you, know, you, you guys are definitely benefiting from a lot of police presence up there. I um, just want to um, pick a heads up. If you're getting off the select bus um, coming from Co op City, at Palm Parkway and Boston Road. Please don't cross in the middle of the block. I see a lot of times when, um, maybe I'm guilty of it too, so whatever. But um, a lot of times when they get off the bus, um, they just get off and they just cr cross um, mid-block. That particular intersection, um, you have cars turning from under the L, and ever since I was five years old, there's always been cars speeding when they turn. So if they're, if they might hit you when you're in the crosswalk, they'll, they definitely might hit you when you're in the middle of the road. So just an FYI. Uh, who is next, Nancy? to point out that um, uh, when I go out and walk on Twig's place, a lot of delivery guys come by from Chinese or other places, and they just do the boss, boss and roll there without looking. They don't stop for the lights. One almost ran me over two weeks ago. He had no lights on. Coming down my plane's road, it was like 9 o'clock at night. And also, are they supposed to stop for the red light? Yes. And what about bicycles? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah. And then, um, I think it was last week, in the last two weeks, uh, we've heard fireworks, and one time it sounded like gunfire. So, I don't know if you're aware, um, the police department has a new uh, new technology called Shot Spotter. Mm -hmm. uh, Shot Spotter covers uh, in the four nine. It covers basically everything north of Palm Park. Okay. And what the, basically what it is, it's uh, um, there's sensors or listening devices that are mounted on top of buildings, and they uh, they listen for the distinct noise of gunfire because they said something I, I think some type of research, they said almost 80% of uh, uh, shots fired are not called in 911 people are not called 911 so they brought in this technology to for police to respond to shots fired incidents uh, even though we're not getting calls on it so it can 
further uh, make arrests and, and uh, apprehend uh, perpetrators quickly and, and suppress the violence. So, and it's very accurate. You know, they'll even tell you, uh, you know, how many shots are fired. You got people listening to it, and it's very distinct. They'll be able to tell the difference between fireworks for the most part, and, uh, and, and shots fired. It's very distinct, and all the officers can actually listen to the shots fired on their, on their phone. We had a shots fired incident right over here at uh, 915 Waring. Oh no, it was Waring and Colby. Um, that activated right now. Yeah, right by Columbus after uh, school let out. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I think that was Chinese New Year. I heard it was a shot. So, I mean, if you hear something, obviously, come on wall, but we also have shot spotter backing up for you. So, uh, we are responding. Right. We, we, that specific incident I was talking about here on, on Colton and, and, and Waring. We actually made an arrest on that guy by the name of Martin Pena, a very bad individual with frequency problem houses. He was out on a, a gun charge. We had just locked him up probably about four weeks prior. He's out on the gun charge, and then he lets him out go. So we he locked him that. He's now in jail? No, he got out again. So, so uh, what's going to happen now? Well, uh, we're hoping to take him federally. Um, we're trying to gain uh, cooperators. Yeah. Um, so if we take him federally, that's, that's a big win for us. But he's a major problem for us. Uh, he's a Pelham uh, house. He's, uh, he's not a resident, but he frequents the area, and he's he's on our radar. And uh, we want him to that. He's not wanted, but we want him. We want to take him out of the He's the what? The we looking for him. Everyone, it's time. It's that time of meeting. It's Marcy Soapbox. Marcy. Wow. in the area is about illegal car sales parked in the limited parking that we have around here. You know, they have for sale signs, there's no plates, there's no um, registration or inspection stickers. Sometimes the VIN number is also covered. Now, I've been calling 311, getting the complaint number, taking pictures, and sending it to the community board 11. And I do it i say twice or three times a week. I also call the number and say I want to buy the car, and then I tell them I'm smashing them in your windows, and, you know, screw you, get it out of here. Well, usually within 10 minutes, somebody comes. <laughs> but this is a major complaint from Laconia to Pelham Parkway, Bronx Park East to, I guess, Williams Bridge. But they're taking up multiple spots in the quieter, day, you know, the quieter blocks. And it's for sale cars. But I live on Reese Place. We have traffic officers patrolling Helen Parkway North, Reese and Place, twice or three times a day looking to give parking tickets. They, they can't ticket these cars because there's no registration. But they should call it in. Yeah, they can call it in, at least. Or the police can come tell them. Yeah, they could be a 311 job. The 311 is called it. And this is how to do it, everybody. Right. Take a picture. Send it to okay. Community Board 11 along with the 311 complaint number so Community Board 11 can work with the police. You know that can be made online? <laughs> I do it by phone. Oh, yeah. The online stinks. Uh, how about tickets? Anybody? Uh, when I have something about tickets, I don't need the microphone if I may. Well, I got um, order that I'm going to Okay, go, go ahead. But nyc.gov slash 301. If you don't want to make a 301 complaint, uh -huh. you're too tired or you don't want to uh -huh. deal with stupid operators, try the 301 website. and or, or, Well, website or an app. Um, and they, most of the stuff can be done there. But next one. What's your name? Good evening. I want to know about the... Um, how many cameras are deployed in the community and in the buildings? In the building I'm living, they put a second camera on the floors and um, in the stairwell because of drug activity on um, Old Mill Avenue. It was a statistic like around here. Uh, 2280. Across the building over here in front of the store. Two NYPD cameras up in this area around Parkside Boots. Um, 
we just got a grant from one of your uh, elected officials. Um, why am I drawing a blind card? Yes, yes. Councilman Torres. Uh, he's helping us out. Mm -hmm. He's getting us cameras, and he uh, reached out to us, and uh, um, we're giving him locations where we'd like to have a camera that would be most beneficial to capturing crime for the area. So you're going to get an increase in, in cameras in, in this uh, in this general area. As a matter of fact, we're going to put one out here. Well, um, can we so you're saying 2280 Olinville Avenue? In, inside the building or outside? Um, I'm going to outside and inside, but they the whole way So that there's no cameras in the hallway or stairwell. So that would be a management issue. Well, um, you should contact Hazel at NIC. She deals with technical management. Yeah, they're, yeah they're, they're, um, I can't say the word here, but. Whatever, they're whatever. Or Senator Klein's office deals with them too. Um, all those numbers are on the meeting agenda. You might want to try them because police, um, police can't really tell landlords where to install cameras in their building. The uh, verticals. Twenty-two eighty, all between Wakes and Waring. It's not a clean hole. So yeah, it's, it's it's not a clean hole building. Uh, there's, um, so you know, the NYPD's under the federal monitor now, so they're looking at a lot of our programs that they uh, that we have historically had in place. One of the programs that they're looking at is uh, what they call the Tap on and Trespass Affidavit uh, Program, where. Uh, landlords uh, would sign a building up with the NYPD, uh, whereas the tenants in the building would agree with the landlord to have police come in and stop people uh, and question them as their right to be uh, there with it. Um, a lot of courts were looking at our, our stops, even though um, the tenants and landlords wanted us there, and they felt as if it was unconstitutional, so... Um, uh, it's being questioned. We've really been directed to pare back uh, or, or slim down the amount of buildings that we have in the TAP program as a result. Um, it's funny, a lot of these people are making rules that really uh, don't affect them, but affect you. Um, if you want your building in a TAP program, uh, uh, voice it to your, your, your uh, landlord. Um, it's uh, the federal government monitoring uh, uh, the activities of the NYPD. To make sure that we're uh, uh, we're performing in a lawful manner. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of cities are under federal monitor. It's not unique, um, but uh, that's one of the things being affected. Uh, the top program. It's unfortunate because I think it's a very um, a good program and it, and it works for you. Um, it basically you're just saying, hey, look, I li I live in this building. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people in this building that don't live here and come in here unlawfully, and they either do drugs and loiter in all my yards. I'm willing to give up my right for the peace, the police to come and stop me in my building and say, hey, do you live there? I'm willing to say yes, stop me, and I'll tell you I live here, and then I go on my way. But I want you to come in here and stop the people that shouldn't be here. That's basically. It. Uh uh, Rudy, uh, well, I don't need him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I was wondering, uh, 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 well, Marcy was talking about tickets, right? And I used to have a car. I used to have a car that they gave a lot of tickets, and I always wonder, uh, the car was taken, you know? I still owe um, registration tickets. And they come. I, I don't know who took it, you know, if it was a city or maybe um, a private contractor. And, and I was wondering if that's so, either the contractor or the police department that took that because no registration the city. was part. Um, the city took it. In this area, the, where the bingo is, you know, that area Brunswick. that used to be. I, I've been living in the area. Uh, yeah, Brunswick. I've been living in the area for 16 years or so. <coughs> and at that time, when I parked the car, I parked, I parked a couple of them, but that car in particular, a Camry, uh, Burgundy, <laughs> uh, was parked there. And they didn't have. Um, signs? No, they didn't have the signs. They didn't have the signs to say to move the cars. So I always check on the cars, on the car, and one day, well, the car wasn't there, and it was taken. 
So, what was this? Huh? What was this? We talking about. Was it your car? Yeah, it was my car, and we talking about. Let me see. How many years ago? Uh, well, my son is 14, maybe 10 years ago. Okay, well, uh, well uh, huh? what's your question? My question is if the car is taken because of the registration and it has tickets and the car is impounded, mm -hmm. do you pay the tickets and to whom you pay the tickets? Well, right now, your, well, your car has been sold by now. <laughs> <laughs> How can you find out in who took it? You can go online. You, you go, uh -huh. if, you know, if you know how time has passed. Well, you're talking well yeah. yeah, your car is so gone. gone. That's gone. No, no. We can look into it, I guess. The tickets have to be there. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you, have, you have to go to the DMV. Because you illegally parked your car. That car has probably been sold at all. Mm hmm. They took your lease and they just produced another thing. Okay. So it means that the tickets that the car was having, the car had, under my registration, I have to pay. Mm -hmm. You have to check with the DMV. Plus, plus presentation. Do we have anyone who has a question who hasn't asked yet? Got the money please? Anyone? Okay. Mark, then Nancy, and then we're going to cut her off. You mentioned that uh, this guy, this individual was shooting a gun, what? and then he got to jail, then he got out, then he did it again, got out. Uh, what kind of enforcement and pressure do we have to put on the DA to keep these people, once they're shooting guns off, illegally, in jail, keep them stay there? Yeah. Oh. Um, unfortunately, uh, I'm sure you, you might know how the criminal justice system works. A lot of times we need people that cooperate and come forward and, and testify. And without that, uh, we don't have a case. And that's why, I, honestly, truly, that's why I think we have a good community here. Uh, and, and why I think crime always keeps coming down in the foreign prison. Because we have people that are brave and care about their community and are willing to come forward and go down to the Bronx DA's office and testify. They brought the, right, did you? Like this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? So yeah. people that are willing to stand up and uh, do what's right and be like, yes, I saw it. Yes, that was the individual. Um, so, um, and I think we have a lot of uh, people in this community that are willing to do that. In this case, we had somebody, and the person uh, um, is, is in fear, obviously, and understandably. Uh, but we have measures to, to help that individual out. Um, and uh, we're hoping to revisit that and uh, bring the charges back up and just take this individual out. If not, uh, that case, the shooting falls through, the shot's fired. There was actually shots fired, no one got hit. But we knew mm -hmm. it was uh, He still has a pending gun case, which we're looking to uh, uh, throw away for. Uh, so, trust me, that he knows he's under a microscope and it's just a matter of time. So, we're looking at this matter of time we go. No, I mean, you had a question? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so, we already know, you know, with everything that's going on a little bit further, um, how the immigration has been taking people and so forth. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah. And my most concern about that is, let's say, for example, somebody gets taken away. Do they report that to the police? Department that this person is going to be taken away just in case, you know, so families don't report the missing. How does that work? Um, okay. So, NYPD follows uh, New York City uh, rules and regulations. Um, we do not question someone's citizenship or their right to be here. Um, it's just not part of the process, nor would it be, um, sense, nor would it be beneficial for us, our relationship. That's not our, that's not our function to do that. Um, now, what can happen, uh, to be frank with you, if, let's, I'm going to make up a scenario. Let's say someone is undocumented. And uh, that person gets arrested. 
and his fingerprints come back, and the federal government uh, sees he was arrested. And based on the fingerprints, because these fingerprints come back immediately. And that individual is of interest to them. They can put a federal, uh, uh, what they call a federal container on that individual and hold him, uh, forcing our hands not to release that individual. Uh, but there's certain guidelines that they're going to have to follow, the federal government I'm talking about, uh, that it has to be a judge issued container, it can't be a, a, just a, a detainer issued by an immigration official. Um, it has to be, uh, there's a process that has to be done. Um, so they, they can do that. And that's a process that's been in place. It's nothing new. Um, so, but we don't we don't go around question nationality or, or, or no, no, no. Um, I just want to know like the pieces. Do they know the family? Say for example, somebody right has a family and someone is undocumented, right? Yeah. Because usually when somebody goes missing, they yeah. report it to the police department. Yeah. Are you guarding that no. there and, and so forth in our community? No, I have, in my sixteen years I have never heard of any uh, uh, interactions or uh, uh, it's almost compartmentalized. Okay. They do immigration, we do policing. You know what I'm saying? Um, so I've never even heard of reports that people got missing from immigration raids or anything like that. Um, if you suspect somebody didn't be cared for, or one of your family members was picked up, I would call on the phone number that I don't know. ice officials. Um, <laughs> maybe we can help you with a prison level. One hand in my 16 years. Uh, Christine, Christine, you have a question? Oh, I just see Rose. Is she around? Oh. Do we have any other questions for the captain? No. That text there would be on direct. Are the shots fired? Are the shots fired? Evidence in court of anything? Does that lead you to someone which you then can charge them for another offense? No. It's, it's great. Uh, well, I don't know if you guys are hearing more and more as our, our work with our, our federal counterparts down in the Southern District of, uh, of New York prosecuting a lot of the crimes that are here in, in Bronx County. And it's proven very successful. They have different uh, uh, criteria that they can use that, that the Bronx DA's office will not use. Um, and one of the things... Uh, in regards to the shots fired incidents, I'll tell you about an incident when I was down in the 4-1. Uh, shots fired from over, I get on scene, and I find this shell casings. Uh, we walk across the street, we look in the building, there's a camera outside and there's a camera in the lobby. I see a camera outside, I see the camera in the lobby, I go down to the super, I see the shooting take place. I immediately look at it and I said, no, that's Anthony Rodriguez, he's one of our crew gang members down there. Um, you can actually see him step out from behind the car, let off the rounds as the car is coming by, and then he runs into the building, and then he looks up into the camera, and then he runs outside. That's all we had, those shell cases and the camera. The feds said, thank you, they took him, got him. That guy was a bad guy. He was, uh, um, they liked to play three homicides and like six shooters. Wow. Really bad guy. And just those shell cases, they'll take someone off. We don't need it. We never got the gun. Uh, we had no witnesses. We had nothing. That's all we had was those shell cases and that camera footage. And it, and it was like perfect. He shot in front of the camera. He ran up. He looks in there. He has a gun. And then he runs out the back. He thinks he made it. Five years ago, he's good to go. He's, he's getting away with it. Now, the feds are coming in. And it's a wrap. Um, very, very quickly, since we've asked already. Is the Safe Haven Project still in effect, where children can go into...